Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and we have a lot of fun news today. I'm excited to get into it, and we're going to kick it off with a little bit of self-promo. I actually released an interview with Jim Butcher, the author of Codex Alera and the Dresden Files yesterday. So if you have not checked it out already, I'll have a link right down there, and I highly suggest you do. Also, in related Dresden Files news, we got the trailer for Peace Talks, the next Dresden Files book coming down the road. And it was also announced that there will actually be two Dresden Files books released this year, one in July and another coming down the road in October. Butcher is going against the trend of fantasy authors right now and cranking two out in one year. That's impressive. And the second book will be titled Battleground. Of course, everything I just said linked right down there. Before we get any further into the news today, I want to go ahead and talk about today's sponsor. Are you like me and having trouble organizing your thoughts to write your fantasy epic? Maybe you have a ton of Google Docs that you've worked on and just sprawled out throughout your Google profile, and you don't remember what half of them are because you forgot to add a title, and that's your fault. So you have a bunch of untitled documents. Well, you're in the same boat I was before I found Campfire. Campfire is a writing tool that helps you organize your stories, whether it's fantasy, sci-fi, horror, romance, I don't know what you got going on, bro, but you can use Campfire to keep it all organized. This isn't as simple as just having various files put in the right place. No, 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 no. You can have character descriptions drawn up like a story-based D&D sheet. And probably most useful to me, honestly, is the timeline. One, it's just fun to connect all these little boxes and be like, mm, the boxes connect here. Look at these events. They're all connected. Woohoo. Because that's actually like what my brain really struggles with is connecting it all so I can just put it there. Bam! Done! And if you really want to get to that next level of crafting and organizing your thoughts, you can go ahead and get the world building expansion, which allows you to do magics, philosophies, languages, etc. It's incredible. I know what you're thinking. Daniel, I don't want to sign up for another subscription service. Well, that's the best part. It's a one-time purchase. $49.99, bam, you got Campfire Pro to write your entire fantasy epic, become the modern day Tolkien, because this tool's here for you. And if you just spend $29.99 more, you get the world building add-on, which allows you to get all those things I was talking about, the magic system builder, philosophies, language, really get to that, that Hulkit level. So use the link in the description and sign up for Campfire Pro today. Back to the video! Now we have two bits of Wheel of Time news I'd like to touch on briefly here. The first is we had a rather clickbaity headline, but one that is still kind of true. You just have to take it with like, this is what they actually mean by it context. You know what I mean? And that is that the show is still technically in development, meaning things that can be done without, you know, hordes of people on set are still being worked on in terms of writing and VFX. This is specifically pulling from Rafe Judkin's Q&A he did on Instagram, where he said, a lot can be done virtually. I'm still doing VFX editing and the season two virtual writer's room, and I can do it all in pajamas. So, hey, it seems like there is still some progress being made in the Wheel of Time show. It's not completely shut down, and that's exciting. Now, the second story is pretty much related to this, and it's that Rafe Judkins did do a Q&A on Instagram, where he had quite a few very cool insights, and let's go over a couple of my favorites, but I'll have the full, like, article about everything cool we learned linked right down there. He did emphasize that they're doing as much in camera as possible, limiting the post-production VFX work. So I really like hearing that. I'm a very big fan of practical effects, and that's what they're essentially saying. They're having a lot happening in camera, which even means what happens in post-production, that CGI layover, if it must be done, usually looks better if it has a very firm base and maybe doing things as simple as lighting in the actual here and now of filming. So that's really cool. I like hearing that step is being emphasized by the showrunner. He has stressed that he will not be merging Min, Elaine, and Avienda into one character, and they will remain individuals, stating specifically, I'm not going to combine huge characters like that. Maybe sometimes a minor character folded into a major one to make better use of our cast, but nothing nutso. So yes, there was a lot of really neat stuff like that. I recommend you check out the full article down there. But first and foremost, Rafe Judkins did say that he was sick and recovered, and that's why he's doing the Q&A now. I hope you're feeling totally better, Rafe. Sorry I had to deal with being sick, especially in this times. I know what it's like to be sick right now. I had a cold, and and everyone treated me like I had the Black Plague. It was just a head cold. <laughs> I sneezed in Target and people, 
people were not happy with me. <laughs> now, in the final bit of like hardcore fantasy news we'll be getting into today, Rebecca Kwong, the author of the popular, put out the cover of the Burning God that will be released in the UK. It looks like this. I like it quite a bit. Very nice. Continues on with the format of the other books. It's amazing that that's like a standard we have to meet, but I've seen so many series that like three or four or five books in, they'll suddenly have like a whole other aesthetic to the cover. So when you put it on your shelf next to the rest of the series, it just looks awful. I hate that. Don't do that. Publishers stay consistent, please, for the love of God. And she also said that the US version of the cover will be released in a hot second, but it's been quite a while and apparently a hot second means some time needs to go by. So it'll be coming soon. And maybe by the time this is out, she will have posted it. Let me actually check real quick. She has not still posted it as of filming at 2 p.m. on Monday. Now, before we get into more fantasy news, let's go ahead and see what the weather is like today in Mordor. How's the weather today, Green Daniel? It's warm. There we go. See, he's back. He's just on remote location. Now, in the strangest bit of fantasy news I have covered in a long, long, long time, and oddly good timing for the channel, author Season Liu, who I've actually had to talk about repeatedly here recently, has had his three-body problem adapted into an animated series in the style of Minecraft. In terms of things I would have ever thought that would happen, this is, is not one of them at all. Apparently this series has been going on for quite some time, but it's now being uploaded to YouTube in a way that everyone can check out. And I watched a little bit of it. It's odd. I'm gonna tell you, it's odd. It kind of isn't, it's not bad. Like, I don't, I don't know what to say here. Check it out. It's, I just highly recommend you see what it is because it's, it's like well done. It's well done. <laughs> now in a very easy to clickbait, so I'm going to try and just verbatim say what is said in the article and you guys can have your opinions on what being said here, news. In an episode of Westworld that recently was released, we had a couple clear cameos from the world of Game of Thrones, including the now infamous showrunners and a robotic version of one of the dragons. They're going into medieval worlds. They were able to slip it in real nice and easy. It wasn't like, oh, they're in Game of Thrones now. It just looked like medieval stuff. Now what they've expanded on beyond here in a couple of interviews is that apparently George R. R. Martin has pitched like as a fun idea a crossover before and like cameos and stuff. I don't, I don't want to get into this too deep because George R. R. Martin could have totally been joking. This is all stuff that's coming like third or fourth hand, it seems like. So I'm just going to let that be. You judge on your own. Check out the article if you want to. I just know that I don't really like this kind of crossover, even if it's done well. It just feels like a gimmick and completely pulls me out of the story, no matter what the context. So you can like this. That's fine. I just don't because it always feels jarring and just destroys immersion for me. Now, as we've talked about here before, Amazon is rolling out their Amazon Cinema Prime, but it's not included in Prime. You do need to pay to watch these cinema movies, but yes, movies that will be in theaters are now going to be straight on Amazon due to recent world events. I like this. This kind of falls into what I was talking about in the last episode of Fantasy News, where it's different and it's a definite change up that I hope stays around. I don't like going to theaters because I think they're kind of gross and would prefer to stay at home and watch them and only go out for the experience of theaters for certain films. I think it's better, honestly. I prefer this approach, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you want movie theaters to kind of just die out or only be for the real blockbusters and you prefer to see the more middle ground movies just straight to streaming release and see how they perform there? It's a definite entertainment change up that I hope stays around. I hope this experiment yields real results. Speaking of the last episode of Fantasy News, I would like to cover that I heard you all clearly and I'm not going to be using the green screen for Fantasy News from now on. People seem to universally not like that approach. So, hey, I'm only gonna use it for weather drops-ins for Green Daniel, how about that? Pretty, pretty hot. And in two quickie Fantasy News last minute updates, Wonder Woman has officially pushed its release date back to June 5th. As far as I'm aware, this is the first canceled release we've seen have an official rescheduling that didn't already immediately have one. And we've also seen every episode of Picard be put up for you to watch for free, of course, uh, in the links in the description down below if you'd like to see the article about that. Pips just kind of got in my way here, so he flew off my He threw off my flow. He threw off my flow. And are you a Ghostbusters fan? Because there is a Ghostbusters art book being released that looks quite 
interesting. 200 pages of being dipped in as a mega fan of the Ghostbusters world. Nostalgia feels all the good. Definitely maybe worth seeing if you're a mega Ghostbusters fan. And the question I have for you on this one is, are you excited for the new, new Ghostbusters movies with Paul Rudd? Because I, I don't know... I don't know how I feel about this one. And hey, are you stuck at home and have considered starting World of Warcraft? Well, now might be the time to do it because apparently double XP points are being offered in a way to encourage players to play more, stay indoors, and stay at home. For the love of God, just stay at home. But yeah, this is another just like cool, good move thing from a gaming company. We're also seeing more and more authors posting to the r slash fantasy subreddit. They're putting a lot of their books up for free for you to enjoy right now while you may be stuck at home. So us fantasy nerds, well, yes, Things aren't awesome. We're getting a lot of entertainment, a lot of cool just humans being bros moves of just, hey, here's some ways to stay entertained while you're at home and maybe catch up on some things you've been wanting to be reading. I like this. I like seeing how much people are coming together to help us combat boredom while we, you know, self-quarantine, self-isolate, whatever, you know, all the terms are being thrown around. And author N.K. Jimson, who was planning a quite large tour for her upcoming release, is apparently shifting that tour to just being virtual instead of canceling it altogether. So if you are an N.K. Jimson fan, go check out her Twitter, follow her, and make sure you pay close attention to how you can maybe ask her a question, listen to a talk, or what have you, because she is not stopping. Mad respect for the author's hustle and continuing to encourage her fans' engagement she releases this next book. Great to see. And in the final bit of fantasy news we're going to talk about here today, the final trailer for Ghost in the Shell for Netflix has been released, and I am just... Okay, so there's, there's two sides of this, and I want to give both their fair shot. If you look at the dislike ratio on this video, it's very high. This trailer is not liked. There is still people who like it. I want to re-emphasize that. And I want to give those people equal time to say, yes, I see where you're coming from. You're just excited to see more Ghost in the Shell. That's fair. And maybe the story, voice acting, execution, everything will look and feel great. But this animation style that is being pushed into our eyeballs is, to me, grotesque. It just looks awful. And I know that's probably not an objective opinion. People might really like these 3D models or think they have some kind of life to them that 2D doesn't, but I am just 100% not down for this approach. I'm not even that big of a Ghost in the Shell fan. I've seen it. I like it. I think it's definitely influential and important for sci-fi, but I am... Mm -mm. Not even a big fan, but I'm mad about this. It just looks bad. And there's also, I want to say, a general vibe from this trailer where it seems to be very much so aimed at kids. And if you've seen Ghost in the Shell, uh... No, no, no that was not... That was not the target audience. So it's just, it's just, a, it's just an out of left field trailer. Like it just feels wrong. Like, can you imagine seeing like a Game of Thrones animated series trailer and its target audience is clearly like 12? Cause that's the vibe I'm getting. It's just, okay. I'm still open to anything being good and I don't mean to be dismissive at face value. And I hope that it is good. I want things to succeed and be enjoyable. So maybe it's just, uh, uh okay. I tried. I tried. I tried really hard. Anyway, guys, this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here, and have a go on, y'all. Peace.